All right, so I would now like to introduce Antonia Hutchinson, who is the Life and Health Science Publisher at F1000, leading on the development of F1000's biomedical publishing portfolio. Having nearly 10 years experience of working in open access publishing, Antonia has held previous open access journal development roles at Taylor and Francis and Springer Nature. Antonia's academic background is in medicinal chemistry, receiving a master's degree in pharmaceutical chemistry in 2009 and a PhD in radiochemistry in 2013. Antonia's presentation today is titled Open and Transparent Publishing, Putting Authors in Control. And I'll hand over to you. You can stop my share. Thanks very much, Catherine, for that introduction. Let me just share my screen. Okay. Hopefully everyone's seeing that in, in full screen mode. Can you just confirm that, Catherine? Yes, that's looking great. Perfect, thank you. So many thanks to the organisers for inviting me to present today. I'm going to be speaking to you about F1000's open and transparent publishing model and how we put authors at the centre of it. So our mission at F1000, if you've not heard of us before, is to accelerate the reach of knowledge and put it in the hands of those who will shape the future. We've been part of the Taylor and Francis group since January 2020, and prior to that, F1000 was an independent publisher since 2013. We've got three aims. The first, to empower researchers, providing authors and reviewers a way to get credit and visibility for all of the work they do to share and critique research. Secondly, to advance knowledge by offering a variety of article options to ensure that all research outputs can be published not simply traditional research articles. And thirdly, to engage society by making work available rapidly, openly, and in ways that make it usable and reusable as possible. And ultimately, to expand the potential for research to have impact. F1000 launched the world's first open research publishing platform in 2013. And you can see it here in the top left of the image. This is F1000 Research. Following its success, F1000 has been developing publishing platforms that follow our publishing model with a range of organisations, from funding agencies like Wellcome in 2016, the Gates Foundation launching their platform in 2017, and most recently the European Commission launching Open Research Europe in March last year. We also work with a range of organisations and learned societies, such as the African Academy of Sciences and the Association of Medical Educators in Europe, and also publishers such as Emerald. But our flagship platform is F1000 Research. Oh, apologies, there is a slide that has just been hidden. Give me two seconds to unhide this. Okay, brilliant. So now I've introduced myself, and as I'm the last speaker of today, I'd like to canvas some thoughts from you all. You've been hearing from some fantastic speakers about open access advocacy, software publishing, fair data, and just from Matthias just now, persistent identifiers. So if you're happy to participate, please log on to menti.com, use the code 2165247, you can see at the top of the screen, and please answer the following 10 questions. You'll not be asked to give any information about yourself, this is completely anonymous, but I'll give you a minute or two to do that, and let's see the results as they come in. Fantastic. 
just give people a little bit longer. Appreciate answering 10 questions in a minute. Is there is a tall order? Interesting. Simultaneous formal and informal peer review um, slipping down slightly. Hopefully, Matthias, you're happy to see that global adoption of ORCID persistent identifiers is getting full marks there. Fantastic, more results coming in. Thank you very much for filling this in. Fantastic to see that the highest score is for publishing culture that encourages DE&I and open reporting on authors, reviewers and editor demographics. Definitely agree with that one. Okay. Thank you very much for sharing your results there. Some really interesting results that have come through. So now I'd like to talk you through the F1000 publishing model, which is used across all of our publishing platforms, and it addresses many of the changes and the things that you've just indicated in the survey that you're interested to see. So F1000 research and of course all F1000 platforms are, are peer reviewed. We do accept submission of articles that have previously been posted on the preprint server. And actually part of our workflow is like that of a preprint server. So as a first step, authors rapidly publish their work as a preprint following our rigorous in-house checks, such as adherence to fully, sorry, fully fair data principles where it is legal and ethical to do so and our editorial policies are fully met, including use of reporting standards and checklists. Once the article has passed these criteria, it's then sent to typesetters and it can be published within a couple of weeks. And on article submission, if you have an ORCID account, you will be asked to link it to F1000 Research. You only need to do this once and then we will always find you when you come and submit to us. So once your article is published, it's then fully citable, it's indexed as a preprint in Google Scholar. And if you're coming from or are funded by a European funder, it will also be indexed in Europe PubMed Central. It has a clear awaiting peer review label in the title of the article. And the important distinction from a preprint, such as MedArchive BioArchive here, is that publication always automatically triggers our open and transparent peer review process by experts, as well as registered users being able to comment on your article as well. The authors suggest relevant experts during their submission to us, which our in-house team then carefully validates to ensure that they are experts in the field. They have no conflicts of interest with the authors. Reviewers then provide a peer review report along with a score which you can see here. A tick means approve or accepted. A question mark means approved with reservations or essentially a minor revision to the required. And a red cross means it's not approved. It requires significant changes to be made before it could be reviewed again. So the score and the report and then published alongside the article together with the name of the reviewer. The authors then address the comments from the reviewer and a new version of the article outlining changes made together with any rebuttal from the author has been published. The new second version sits on top of the first version, but all versions of the article remain available. They are linked together and they're independently citable, which means that they each have an independent DOI. Once an article passes peer review, it's then indexed in Scopus, Medline, PubMed Central, among others, and its status and version is updated in Europe PubMed Central and Google Scholar. Articles are considered to pass peer review when they have received two approves, two ticks, 
four, two approved with, question, with reservations, so two question marks, and one tick. We offer a range of article types across our platform. Each article type goes through the same peer review process that I just described, but the question for peer review answers are tailored to the respective article type. We look to publish science that asks a valid research question and follow sound methodology. This includes experimental studies, null and negative research, confirmatory studies, and other research outputs that are not generally published in traditional journals. We also look for opportunities to expand our range of article types to best serve the research communities. So the genome note that we launched last summer provides a brief description of a genome sequence and how, why and how it was sequenced. It's not a full research article, there are no analyses or conclusions, and we launched a genome sequencing gateway on F1000 research to better collate um, and curate our genome notes. We also launched policy brief article type last summer, and this was specifically launched for my colleagues in the humanities and social sciences. The articles provide a succinct overview of a policy or policy related issue, and they are written for the general public, for a lay audience. And we've launched our research on research policy and culture gateway, where these article types are very popular. Aside from our publishing platforms that I showed earlier, we partner with several funders, societies, and organizations and institutes on F1000 Research itself. Each have their own bespoke community gateway, or a portal, if you like, on F1000 Research. And I invite you to explore F1000 Research and our community areas. As I mentioned before, F1000 Research is indexed to make sure content is discoverable and usable by others. Articles are well cited in F1000 research, as evidenced here in the Scopus subject quartiles, where F1000 has most of its content. So these reflect the heritage of F1000 research. We started out as a predominantly life and medical sciences publisher, but now we support the publication of research across all subject areas. Our humanities and social sciences, as well as physical sciences content is growing rapidly. Across our partner platforms and community portals on F1000 Research, we now work with over 30 funders, associations, societies, institutions, and publishers that have adopted the F1000 publishing model. As researchers in the audience, I hope that our publishing model sounds of interest to you, that it could alleviate some of the frustrations that you have had publishing your work in the past. And I invite you to find out more about us at f1000.com or reach out to me directly on my email address at the bottom of the slide here. If you're an organization wanting to support your researchers or grantees to publish openly, and you're seeking to create a bespoke publishing solution for your organization, then please also get in touch. Many, many thanks for listening. Thanks for participating um, in my mentee survey. I'm very happy to take questions. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Antonia. We've received several questions in the Padlet, um, so I'll get started. Um, the first question is, is F1000 and outputs open access? Oh, sorry, do you mind just saying that last sentence again, Catherine? Yep. Um, is F1000 and outputs open access? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yes, so all of our content is published open access and a CCBY, so Creative Commons um, license, and it's the most open license that is applied. We want to make sure that content on our platform is as accessible and reusable as possible. Okay, uh, the next question is, I have heard that researchers like the features of F1000, the features that F1000 offers, but their main concern is the high cost of publishing with F1000. Are there plans for F1000 to negotiate institutional agreements rather than require individual article processing charges? Yeah, thank you very much for that question. And I appreciate that researchers have different levels of funding and it can be very frustrating when there is an article processing charge required. So in terms of our um, article processing charges, so we are much, much lower 
um, than many other traditional journals. And we do use the APC price transparency uh, model from our colleagues at Coalition S, and you'll be hearing about a Plan S globally. So if you're publishing a full article with us, it's 1,350 US dollars. Um, so around about a thousand pounds. If you're publishing a short article like the genome note or a data note, um, then the charge there is at each hundred dollars. Um, in terms of the next question, which was, around institution agreements, absolutely. We do have a number of organisations that we work with um, where we have an agreement, either an institutional agreement or it's with a funder, for example, where they will cover the APCs with their organisations. So if you come into any of our gateways, there is information about the eligibility to go and publish in those gateways and whether the APC will be charged. Um, if there's any organisations in the background that are thinking, um, yes, I'd like to get in touch and, and set up an agreement, then please do get in touch um, and I can pass details on to our partnerships team. Okay, fantastic. I think that answers another one of the questions about whether authors have to pay an APC to publish in F1000. That one's covered. Um, there's a question, how long does it take for the peer review process? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, so within our model, so the article is typeset, it's then published online um, with the DOI, so it can start gaining citations at the same time as being peer reviewed. So we cover, as I've mentioned, predominantly in the biomedical sciences as well, our heritage is, but we also cover across physical sciences um, and humanities and social sciences. And obviously there are um, different expectations, but also different turnarounds expected from reviewers as well within those subject areas. So I think it's, it's very difficult to have a one size fits all. Um, the, we do work very closely with the reviewers and because our model is that authors suggest who the reviewers are, although we make sure that there are very stringent checks in place and um, to check against things like competing interests, for example, the, it is possible for articles to be reviewed very quickly. Um, if an author, for example, gave us a cohort of reviewers, we went through those reviewers and we found that actually there's a lot of competing interests and they weren't suitable. We would go back to the authors and ask them for some additional names. And we would also work with them to provide some additional names as well. Um, as the same with any system, we send automated replies out to reviewers. We try not to overuse reviewers as well if they just submitted to us. Um, then our system automatically recognises that and we won't be sending them another article out for a month or two. Um, our, <clears throat> our peer review times at the moment, um, typically we are getting reviews back within about three to four weeks. But in terms of articles passing peer review, um, that is obviously dependent on the authors making those revisions. Um, to the article that come back for the peer review as well. So apologies, that was a slightly long waffly answer to that one, but um, there isn't a, an easy metric to pick up on. Oh, that was good. Okay, here's a, another this fairly long question. Um, okay. Did I, did I understand correctly that you can publish to F1000 research straight up, i.e. it initially acts a bit like a preprint server but if once peer reviewed, it will become properly published and charges apply, i.e. do preprints have to be accepted or invited in the first instance, or are there charges at the preprint -pre stage? Yeah, those are brilliant questions. And yeah, I can completely understand how that's, that's not clear. So let me clarify. So when you submit to us, <clears throat> it will be clear to you from there whether you're able to take advantage and of any of the agreements <clears throat> that we have in place or whether there will be an APC applicable. The APC becomes applicable once the article has been accepted and that's at the point where the editorial team have done the checks and um, perhaps there are a couple of things that might be revising on the manuscript and that would happen, a new version would come to us and at the point that our team accept the article it then gets passed over to our production team for typesetting and publishing, that's the point that the APC is applicable. So whereas on, a, on some preprint service, there's not a charge to publish with them, the difference with us is, is essentially combining that preprinting process and that formal peer review and a formal publication and peer review into one step. So as soon as the article is published, although it acts like a preprint at that point, 
i.e. it's published ahead of the peer review. The point for us is that the peer review is automatically triggered at that point. So what you wouldn't be able to do is publish with us and then go and take that article and go and publish it in a traditional journal because your article will be formally peer reviewed with us. Um, so it is very much formally published. Um, with the scoring system, if, you know, for example, you did publish with us and your article got across initially, so it was not approved, the authors are invited to address the comments by the reviewers to submit a new version. And that can be at any point as well. There is no time limit on that. So people can be improving their articles in real time and um, having those multiple versions published together. And it's essentially making sure that the full um, scholarly record is available. Hopefully that answers the question. Yes, that was great. Um, we've run out of time for questions. If you've got time, Antonia, there were a few more questions in the Padlet sure. you could answer there, but thank you very much for joining us. That was great. Thanks so much for having me. Okay.